After sitting down to eat those hard-boiled eggs that were still kept nice and warm for my knitted egg cozy, I decided that I wanted to try to flush out a little bit more of the breakfast table. One thing that is absolutely vital for me, at least, is a nice hot cup of coffee. Conveniently, on the exact same Ovid page in The Art of Knitting, there's a pattern for a coffee filter. Now, I managed to get a vintage or antique coffee pot for pretty inexpensive a while back, but I never really knew how to prepare the coffee in it. However, looking up some sources online, it seems like you would actually take a coffee sock, they would call it sometimes, because it literally is like the end of a sock that you're knitting here, or a piece of muslin, put it around a wire bent into the shape that'll fit on top of your coffee pot, put your grinds in, and then pour the hot water over. And it's kind of like a drip coffee, or a pour over coffee, just done in a pot. In order to actually be able to use my lovely coffee pot, I wanted to make this coffee filter. I'm gonna use a slightly thicker yarn, and hopefully it'll go a little bit faster. Hopefully I don't get too tired of like, long tubes that narrow. This is not just a coffee pot, but a coffee pot and creamer set, and I did verify that it's silver plated, and just to be sure that the silver plate wasn't worn away anywhere and exposing some more dangerous metals underneath, I did do some lead testing and other testing on the insides of this coffee pot, just to make sure that it was safe to drink from. So if you wanna do something similar, I recommend you research and make sure that you know that whatever you're using is actually safe to use, especially with something acidic like coffee. If you also want to make this project, I will leave a link down in the description below to the freely accessible instructions that I found pretty easy to follow. So these are the original antique instructions, as well as the link to the Knit Picks dishy cotton yarn that I used in order to make this filter. I did use quite a thicker yarn than what they recommend and thicker needles, but that was because this was meant to be a little bit of a break project from my fine, fine stockings projects. So I wanted this to go a little bit faster. I also cast on fewer stitches just to make sure that I would fit the actual top of my coffee pot. So you might just have to adjust how many stitches you cast on for your filter to fit the top of your coffee pot. I was also slightly concerned that now that I was using a thicker yarn that the holes in the knitting would be large enough to let my grind slip through. But I found that it wasn't too much of a problem because I more coarsely ground my coffee beans and I didn't end up having a lot of sediment in the resulting coffee at all. Enough to chat about the setup of this project and time to actually get knitting. I made this sock a bit shorter than what the description said just to fit my personal coffee pot and I will say that it fits nearly perfectly. After finishing the knitting portion of this project, which was very fast, it was basically just the toe of a sock, I then used a flexible wire to thread through the open holes in the filter that were at the top, created by the yarn overs and knit two togethers. I then fastened that to the actual opening of the coffee pot to make sure it stayed in place as I poured water over it. Then followed the process outlined by Mrs. Beaton in the Book of Household Management from the 1960s, which says to first pour in a little bit of hot water into your coffee pot to make sure that your pot is nice and hot. Next, it says to add as many coffee grounds as you'd like. I believe I put in four scoopfuls because I was planning on making four cups of coffee and that's the ratio I generally use, though this made slightly weak coffee in the end, so I would probably add more in the future. This coffee pot holds a surprising amount of water. The directions then say to pour over the water over your coffee grounds and your filter to close the top and wait until all the water has filtered through before taking out the bag and sending it to the table. However, I found that my filter actually worked so well that I had to pour water in increments because I had to wait for the water to filter through each time. And like I said before, this coffee pot actually holds a lot more water than I was expecting it to. And it was a little bit difficult to tell exactly when I had filled the coffee pot. So I filled it a few times, guesstimating approximately how much water I added. Though in the future, maybe I would do some slightly more exact measurements because like I said, I made quite weak coffee from this process. After I had added as much boiling water as I wanted, I then removed the filter from the coffee pot, which was quite a simple process, and I ended up staining the cotton coffee filter, but I do like the look of it. I think a lot of times people would actually use coffee to stain their cotton laces, and it does give a wonderful aged effect. Now that my coffee was done, it was time to pour myself a lovely cup of coffee and I added some milk from my creamer container and I sat down to enjoy my breakfast cup of coffee. 
this is a wonderful addition to my breakfast table alongside my lovely egg warmers. It adds a bit of fun, whimsy, and just enjoyment to the start of my day. I really love it. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you enjoy content like this and would like to see some more, please feel free to subscribe. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a like, and I will see you again really, really soon.